the City of Newport, Rhode Island's COVID-19 Vaccine Emergency Dispensing Overview. Also a review of the traditional meds pods requirements and a comparison to the special considerations for dispensing a COVID-19 vaccine. First, we will review a traditional meds pod, what it is, how it works, and how the COVID-19 vaccine dispensing plans are different. What is a traditional meds pods? It's a medical emergency distribution system point of distribution. The goal is to deliver medications and potential antidotes following a large scale outbreak or terrorist attack. It requires the cooperation of several government agencies, starting at the federal level, working its way to the states and local municipalities. It also includes volunteer organization support. The way it works is through a chain of events. First, the CDC and the State Department of Health identify a specific threat to public health. Then the DOH determines the need to activate the MedsPods distribution plans, either statewide, regionally, or locally. The DOH contacts local EMA directors to have them activate their MedsPods plan to react to the specific threat. The local EMA directors work to set up their emergency medication dispensing plan at a predetermined location. The number of meds pods distribution sites required by a community is based upon the community's population. The city of Newport's population size requires us to have and be prepared for one dispensing site year round and the potential to open up a second site during our primary tour seasons. The COVID-19 vaccination plans is a little different. There are actually five key differences. The first is the limited supply of vaccine. Second is the need for vaccine recipients to be pre-screened and pre-registered prior to arriving at the vaccine dispensing sites. Third is the need to incorporate the new social distancing standards and requirements into the plan. Fourth is adapting to the unique handling and storage requirements for each vaccine option. The fifth is the need to make the city's distribution plan for the COVID-19 vaccine able to be adapted to fit the needs of the community and to the unique needs and requirements that the vaccine itself presents. First is the limited supply of available vaccine. Four major pharmaceutical companies have been racing for FDA approval. Pfizer was the first to gain emergency FDA approval with Moderna's following close behind. Four other companies are still working their way through the clinical trial. This results in a limited supply and the need for a phased distribution plan to be put in place. The state of Rhode Island has rolled out a four phase distribution plan, starting with phase one that will have the first doses of the vaccine going to healthcare workers and people with underlying serious health conditions. During phase two, the vaccine will be available to critical infrastructure workers, as long as people with moderate health conditions and people living in group settings, such as homeless shelters, or people that are incarcerated. Phase three will have the vaccine available to young adults, children, and workers in critical industry. Phase four will have the vaccine option available to all others that weren't covered in previous phases. The second difference for a COVID-19 vaccine distribution plan is the need for vaccine recipients to be pre-registered and pre-screened prior to receiving the vaccine. The screening process includes health and exposure screening, pre-registration and scheduling, screening for contraindications such as a history of severe allergic reactions, post-vaccination side effects monitoring. Approximately 40% of the people receiving the vaccine will experience some sort of post-vaccination side effects that will mimic the COVID-19 virus itself. This usually takes place between 24 and 48 hours after receiving the initial dose and may also take place after receiving the second dose. The pre-screening registration process will also monitor patients to schedule their second dose follow-up. Both the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines require a second vaccine booster dose three to four weeks following the initial vaccine. The DOH is planning to address the pre-screening registration requirements through the use of PrepMod and the Wellness Company. PrepMod is a web-based program designed specifically to address the challenges of distributing the COVID-19 vaccine. 
the Rhode Island Department of Health will be using PrepMod for the initial phase one distribution. The wellness company is a privately owned company that provides pre-health screening and registration, vaccine scheduling and follow-up, and they also provide vaccinators to help with the process. The Department of Health will likely be partnering with the wellness company for future phase distribution plans. The third challenge are the social distancing requirements. These will be addressed by strictly requiring the use of face masks, social distance signing, the frequent availability of hand sanitizing stations. Also, there's a minimum square foot per person requirement for both dispensing and post-vaccine observation areas of 100 square foot per person. Another that factor that must be a part of the equation is the amount of space needed to vaccinate and the allotted time needed to administer the vaccines. Presently, we're calculating 10 minutes per person. There's also a required time for post-vaccine observation. For the COVID-19 vaccine, this is 15 minutes per person. The time limitations and space requirements factor into the location size needed and the projected number of vaccinations that can be dispensed per day. Another challenge presented by a COVID-19 vaccine is the unique handling and storage requirements for each vaccine option. Cold train transport and storage is required. The Pfizer vaccine needs near negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit storage. Additionally, the Pfizer vaccine needs to be reconstituted at the vaccination site. The Moderna vaccine also requires sub-freezing storage. Both vaccines, once thawed, if they're not used, must be disposed of. The fifth key takeaway is the ability to adapt the city's MedSpods distribution plan to fit the needs of the COVID-19 vaccine. Traditional MedSpod sites might not work best. We need the ability to select new sites and adapt the plan to fit those sites. Along with site locations, vaccine delivery options must also remain flexible. We'll need to take a look at optional site locations and distribution methods. We can work to adapt the plan to our existing site location. The Claiborne Elementary School has been identified as the city's primary distribution site since it's opened. We must also take a hard look to see if there's other options that work better, such as the Florence Gray Center, the Innovation Hub, the Gateway Transportation Center. We must be able to take a look at all options available to us. Also, drive-through dispensing is an option to consider. Tents could be set up at the High Line parking lot, or CCRI parking lot, or the Gateway Center to accommodate this. Additionally, we have to maintain an open mind to alternative dispensing methods such as mobile dispensing, where we can go out to the community and get the medications to those people that can't make it to our sites. Let's take a look and compare the Pell Elementary School site plans for traditional meds pods plan versus a COVID-19 specific plan. From the start, you can determine that additional space will be gained due to less space being needed for on-site forms completion and review. Also, additional space will be needed to accommodate the square foot per person time requirements for both vaccine dispensing and post-vaccine observation times. Here's a look at the current traditional plan for the Pell School. As you can see, significant space is being dedicated to forms completion and review. This plan's post-vaccination observation area combined with the 15 minute per person post-observation times factored into a six hour dispensing event results in a daily capacity of 384 vaccines being able to be administered. This will require approximately eight vaccinators per day to achieve this daily total. Incorporating the COVID-19 vaccination guidelines into the Pell School footprint presents some surprising results. Adapting the site reduces the area needed for forms review and completion and increases the space available for medication distribution and post-vaccine observation. Factoring in the social distancing per person space requirements, along with the necessary observation time, the total vaccination per six hour day increased from 384 to just over 2,300 vaccines per day. This would require approximately 50 vaccinators to achieve this daily total. Potentially adapting the Pell Elementary School plan to accommodate the needs of a COVID-19 vaccine distribution requires keeping an open mind. The preliminary results were both surprising and a little misleading. There's many parts of the equation that have to be considered and checked off before determining the best dispensing site location. Some of these include site accessibility, 
the site's availability to be used when needed, the site's ability to support the information technological needs of a defensing operation, the availability of adequate supply of vaccine to match the planned site capacity, the level of community interest to receive the vaccine and matching that with the available supplies, the ability to maintain the necessary workforce of volunteers needed to staff the site for what could potentially be a multiple day event. Working to adapt the plan, you must consider the limited supply of vaccine, the pre-health screening and registration requirements, the social distancing and exposure control safeguards, the specific vaccine storage and handling needs, and maintaining the flexibility required to adapt the plan to best meet the needs of the community and the Rhode Island Department of Health. In summary, AmedsPods is a medical emergency dispensing system point of distribution. It requires the involvement of the CDC, the Rhode Island Department of Health, local EMA, as well as volunteer groups. The new COVID-19 vaccine requirements resulted in five key takeaways. The limited supply of vaccine, the pre-health screening registration requirement, the social distancing and exposure control safeguards, as well as specific vaccine storage and handling needs. Finally, we have to keep the plan able to be adapted to the changing environment and the needs of the community. Questions? I'm sure there are many now, and there'll be more as we make our way through the process. I'm confident that if we work together, we can find the answer to all of our questions. Thank you for your time and interest.